This is part three of the Switching to OpenSUSE series. So as with all my part three series, a lot of the time I go in and I start to see a lot of the issues or just big differences between it and many other popular distributions. And this is definitely the case with OpenSUSE as I wanna lay out all the differences I've seen which many new users stumble on when you first get into a brand new OpenSUSE install. So the first thing I notice is the limited software repositories. Uh, it's very evident because there's no installers for Codex and a lot of other packages out there. You almost have to, no, you do have to go in and add the Pac-Man repository because you're gonna need those Codex. You're gonna need a lot of this just to do your day-to-day -day operations as a desktop Linux user. Now, the OpenSUSE team purposely leaves a lot of this out because SUSE is a commercial product and the licensing restrictions are very, very uh, tight around these specific packages. So they don't want to host them and therefore they don't put them on by default. Now, I've gone in past videos and kind of gone over this, so I'm not gonna hang on this, but it is something you should definitely be aware of as a new user. The second thing is it uses ButterFS by default. So many other distributions out there use ext4, which I find is a little bit faster, but ButterFS has some more features and also it gets a lot of love in every single Linux kernel patch. For the past couple months, I always see a line item for it. So they're always doing things to help and uh, basically I think eventually it will completely see widespread adoption. But do note, it does see a performance decrease. However, you do pick up some positives such as snapshots, which allows you to restore your computer to a prior time to that snapshot like that. Pretty awesome. So the third thing is it uses RPM packages. This is important to note as you know, most of the packages for, that are based on RPMs are enterprise grade or business grade, where Debian based packages are a lot more uh, prevalent in all of the Linux desktop world. As you've seen, if you've been on many distributions, you'll notice that Debian is a lot of times the go to as far as packages are concerned. Not to say that RPMs don't work just as well. They do, it's just a lot of the guides online and stuff uh, are based on Debian. So good to know. And that's also important to notice about the terminal. It uses zipper instead of APT or Pac-Man, which many guides online are Debian or Arch based. So you have to use zipper to install these things. So the install of packages and getting your programs onto OpenSUSE is a big challenge for a lot of new users because you have to learn zipper in the terminal. You're going to have to use RPM packages instead of DEB. You're going to have to um, kind of learn the ins and outs of using YAST installer, which is a completely kind of new thing for many users, but that's going to be your GUI install uh tool. All these things are much different than your traditional distributions out there. So I noticed that I had no problem picking them up. I was able to get many of these things installed pretty much with ease. Uh, however, there is a little learning curve. So just expect or do research prior to jumping and really understand what you need to do uh, before you get in there and you're going, oh crap, I need to install these things and I have no idea how. So it's good to know uh, I didn't find any issue with any of these installers. I like RPM packages. Uh, Zipper I thought was very intuitive and I actually like their syntax better than Pac-Man or APT. And um, the installer from Yast I thought was brilliant. So that's it for the installing but you should know those things there are big differences between it and many other distributions so the last thing and this is surely a negative is it's a lot bulkier by default i did the bulkiest install you can do of OpenSUSE, so i might have a little bit of bias here but uh i did note that it does have a bigger footprint than many other distributions i I had in the past. Now, I did come from Arch, which had a zero footprint because pretty much you installed everything. And if you didn't want to install a bunch of crap, you didn't. Well, the OpenSUSE, it kind of gets packaged with all of this, especially the KDE version of it. 
that's a pretty big install. So if you're using older hardware, I, I would highly recommend steering clear of an OpenSUSE KDE implementation because that's gonna be rough for you. Now, for me, I have a pretty decent system. So I haven't noticed any performance decreases. I just noticed the install was a bit bigger than many other Linux distributions out there. So that's it for part three of OpenSUSE. Overall, I'm still enjoying myself, but I've been reading the comments back and forth of part one and part two, and I wanna kinda of piece together all the frustrations of all the users in the comments that I've read and put it into one video. So as if you're working through this entire series, you go on through one and two, I don't want it to seem like it's all, you know, sunshine and rainbows. I want you to get the true experience. Now, I adapted to this pretty quickly. However, I noticed a lot of other people didn't. So OpenSUSE is different, and I would highly recommend looking up videos about Zipper or looking up videos about Yast and using this control center prior to installing because it's just a lot different than many other things. I really enjoy it. I thought it was very intuitive and I picked it up pretty darn easy. So uh, I still am a big OpenSUSE advocate. I don't know if I'll stay on it or not. I really like KDE on it. I really like how my system seems a bit more stable than it was on that bleeding edge of Arch where I was installing all those packages. Um, you know, and as to be expected, uh, the rolling release of Tumbleweed, I did notice it still runs behind Arch. Like Arch, when I left it uh, last week, it was I was already on 4.20. Heck, this kernel is on, uh, you know, I can, I can pull up Tumble here, but uh, I believe it's on 4.19.11. So uh, the LTS of Arch, by comparison, it got pushed up to 4.19.13. So it's still behind the LTS, which is kind of funny. I'm sure it won't stay there. I'm sure it'll push past it here in the upcoming weeks, but still a little bit humor there of how bleeding edge Arch was. And OpenSUSE is running, you know, probably about two, three weeks behind, I'd say, uh, based on those numbers. But you know, don't quote me on that. That's just me shooting from the hip. But that's my overall differences, not necessarily downsides. There are some there for some users and you need to know all these um, caveats before you make the jump. And I hope that's informative for you guys out there thinking of making this switch. Uh, check the comments below. I actually have added some books if you're interested in learning Linux a little bit more because I know we are getting a lot more new people. So I'm gonna try and cater a little bit to them and get more people on Linux. And if you do have issues with installation, please look up the Reddit link down below and post, post your issue there. Uh, a lot of times the YouTube comments, I'll check them for about a week on one video and then it's on to the next because I can't keep up with about uh, 200 to 300 comments per day that I get. So the Reddit is a lot easier to kind of see the issue and other community members can answer that and easily uh, get you fixed up. But uh, that's it, and I'll see you guys in the next video.